Hello, my name is Nicola Baird and the title of my paper is Heritage and Identity, Museums and Memory, Recreating Heritage, the case of David Bomberg and the Sarah Rose Collection at London South Bank University. London South Bank University is home to a collection of over 150 paintings and drawings by British artist David Bomberg and selected former pupils bequeathed by independent collector Sarah Rose in 2012. Following the receipt of a £236,000 grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund for the provision of a dedicated gallery space and a curator for a period of two years, the Borough Road Gallery, located on the ground floor of the University's Borough Road building, opened in June 2012. A full-time programme of temporary exhibitions ran until July 2016, at which point the budget was cut, rendering the collection effectively hidden and homeless what was once public-facing, public ostensibly physically inaccessible and requiring privileged access. The status and position of the collection have altered radically since its gifting to LSBU. With no experience of this type of enterprise, including no experience of collection management, initially selected university staff members had works connected to the Borough Road Gallery project built into their forward job plans, as outlined in the original HLF submission. And yet, despite forming part of the multidisciplinary School of Arts and Creative Industries and benefiting at various stages from the involvement of and collaboration with academic staff and students, the project was seen as peripheral to core teaching and research activities, never fully understood by the university's executive and thus inassimilable within institutional operational systems. The reasons for the collection's status as unconfirmed, unsettled, marginal and troublesome, as well as practically and academically incommensurate, are, however, more manifold than such an explanation can provide. Well before the inauguration of the gallery, the unravelling of the project arguably began on the 11th of August 2008, with the signing of the original deed of trust by former Vice-Chancellor Dane Hopkin. The deed stipulated, among other things, that exhibition should be devoted exclusively to works of art by David Bomberg, Dennis Crefield, Cliff Holden, Thomas Holden, Edna Mann, Dorothy Mead, Everett Lundquist and Miles Richmond, and that special exhibitions may be held to include the work of former students, other than those represented in the collection, as well as by those who did not study with David Bomberg, in which cases the selections will be made by the donor. Seeming paradoxically to secure its future, such an intransigent and thus practically unworkable agreement resulted instead in the collection's deterritorialization. Those responsible failed initially to grasp the implications of the deed, which remains in an almost permanent state of renegotiation, and which has contributed to the disintegration of the project behind what was, in effect, a legitimising facade. The Sarah Rose Collection LSBU project initially sought to explore with a community of interest the cultural value of a group of artists whose work remains largely unknown and to promote the enjoyment and value of a nationally important her artistic heritage within local, commercial and educational communities, in line with the definition of heritage sanctioned by the Her Heritage Lottery Fund. And yet the challenges for the Sarah Rose Collection have always been those of belonging, as well as status and legitimation. As a powerful and legitimating agent, Bomberg is key to the collection. For Rose, he is a messiah figure, a forgotten genius marginalised by the modernist mainstream. Attempting to bypass modernism and to amplify Bomberg's status by asserting his position as the true inheritor of a venerable European tradition, included within which are Giotto, Uccello, Michelangelo, El Greco, Van Gogh and Turner, Rosa pines that his paintings remind one more of Cezanne, Goya or Piero della Francesca than of Munch, Ensor, Noldos or Soutine. Refusing to engage with debates surrounding his position in relation to aesthetic modernism, she asserts that Bomberg's early abstract work was very different from the Vorticists. In so doing, she differs from the art historical majority, for the established narrative links Bomberg to Vorticism, despite the fact that he never became a member of the group. Such a pronouncement is not unpacked, but followed instead by the assertion that, in contrast to the, to the prevailing fashion, Bomberg realised it was necessary to teach art in such a way that the tradition could continue in the face of a cultural climate mitigating militating against it. Rose pits Bomberg against the modern and in so doing engages with only one part of the most familiar of bipartite art historical narratives, 
that which deems the artist's early work to have been wholly modern and his mid-career and late work to have been non-modern or even anti-modern. The word tradition appears frequently elsewhere in Rose's text and is used along with the names of old and modern masters to emphasise cultural value and insist that and still that sought after sense of residual and abiding art historical significance in Bomberg's work. Interviews with key institutional players in relation not only to the heritage, but also the artistic, educational and financial value of the collection, including trustees Michael Simmons, Mike Molan and Philip Richmond, as well as academic project director Andrew Judney and then provost Pat Bailey, reveal in part the institutional work net or rather the network of relations constructed, maintained and subsequently partially dissolved in July 2016 with the effective closure of the Borough Road Gallery as the public facing home of the Sarah Rose Collection. In so doing, they exposed the nature of the relations between selected university representatives and the collection, enabling the examination of the agency of the collection within the Sarah Rose LSBU assemblage and of the ways in which it is valued, venerated or otherwise. Despite institutional representatives varying roles and responsibilities, the collection is generally perceived to be not only emphatically idiosyncratic, but also uneven. It becomes evident too that there is a palpable tension between an approach to and presentation of the collection that is dynamic, changing, endorsed by Judney, Bailey and former curators of the collection, and Rose's aspect view, seen to be highlighted through the repeated use of the word mausoleum, to describe Rose's vision for the collection by Simmons, Molan and Judney, and manifested too in the dichotomy between considering the, uh, the gallery to be a mausoleum and the collection as consisting of living, breathing things, needing oxygen, or rather bringing to life, instead of being stuck, locked away in what is tellingly labelled a cupboard. Rose's rationale for collecting reveals her very personal and particular vision of and for the collection, built up over 30 years and in so doing her efforts to recreate such heritage. I made the collection to draw much needed attention to the teaching of Bomberg and to his understanding of the tradition of painting he both valued and exemplified. Attempting to define the collection as a school of Bomberg, Rose goes on to explain that it is work not given its due in any existing institution and that it seemed appropriate for it to be housed in a place where David Bomberg had had such influence, proclaiming, I'm the only one buying Bomberg in the borough group and that this work was being neglected. If I hadn't collected it, it would have been lost. She reflects, when I started collecting, people either loved Bumberg or hated him. He is less hated now, but I'm not sure about more loved. In relation to the specific content of the collection, Rose says, I've got early works, every period, a microcosm of his whole output. Despite not having any formal academic or practical training in art, and in contrast to the majority of art historical readings, she declares that there's no difference in the quality of what is being produced and no difference in direction between early and late works before going on to say that I wouldn't change my collection for anything anyone could give me. If someone offered me all the Rembrandts in exchange for my collection, I wouldn't take them because it's not making the point I want to make. Promoting a self-authored cryptic theory relating to the physical impact of the act of viewing such works under the heading stillness and movement in works of arts. She explains that the works appeal to me because they resonate with the natural world. They are physically restful and at the same time intellectually and visually exciting. To me, these painters succeed in conveying both what we see with our eyes and feel with our bodies. Branding herself a simple enthusiast, Rose feels her contribution to the field to be the analysis and exploration of the act of viewing, which she sees as key to a more profound, more widespread understanding of the work. The nervous system and the breathing are affected and we experience a feeling of relaxation or rest. The breath rate will reduce, sometimes considerably, and become shallower. Such a meditative effect, of which she speaks mystically and to which she refers as the source of the force, is, she asserts, the only reason I collected these works, not wanting to dilute the effect by including anything additional or extraneous. Endeavouring to articulate the source of, of the force in a talk at LSBU advertised as exploring the relationship between forces of nature and the works in the collection, as part of which parallels would be drawn with other art forms, music, literature and architecture. Rose begins by proclaiming that there is in Bomberg's work an element of the power that was in cave paintings. She constructs an idiosyncr idiosyncratic brand of linear art history featuring Delacroix, Ang, 
Goya, Velasquez, Rembrandt, Modigliani and Augustus John, as well as Bomberg, Dorothy Mead, Cliff Holden and Dennis Crefield, before asserting that the works in the collection were created spontaneously out of feeling and sensitivity, without the artists using their brains, and that that's how we should look at them, not looking for meaning, just experiencing, feeling the shapes. Having pursued a fairly lengthy discussion of the effects of movement on the viewer, she quotes Holden's assertion that Bomberg's paintings are in fact static, seeming to contradict her previous pronouncement that every stroke on the surface of a painting or drawing is a record of movement, resulting in a disjointed and enigmatic thesis. Rose's idiosyncratic vision of and for the collection, characterised by an opposition to hybridity and a persistent commitment to purification, as well as self-authored cryptic theories, explain in part the struggle LSBU has faced in attempting to narrativise Bomberg and the Sarah Rose collection differently, as well as the ways in which such, in, such intransigence can be seen to contribute to the artist's art historical and cultural isolation, and thus unsettled and insider-outsider status. The establishment of a narrative of heritage, key to which is Bomberg's position within an ancient and venerable art historical lineage, both sought to enable and failed to secure its leg legitimization. And yet, despite such a struggle, subsequent attempts by former curators of the collection have sought to render its heritage useful and relevant to today by departing from the exhibition of prescribed artworks and expected outcomes, and placing emphasis instead on contemporary artist residencies as well as art, poetry, music and dance commissions. Heritage as present-centred, create, created, shaped and managed by, as well as in response to the demands of the present, is therefore open to constant revision and change. As users of heritage, those responsible for curating and reinterpreting the collection can be seen active in their appropriations, accommodations and negotiations with it. Alternative conceptions of heritage as functioning as a form of resistance to hegemonic discourses and as a marker of plurality in multicultural and plural societies can also be seen to relate to the Sarah Rose Collection Borough Road Gallery and the commitment to narratives which present Bomberg as outsider and maverick, his teaching a form of resistance to ac accepted academic protocol. In so doing, former gall gallery curators have sought to reconfigure Rose's interest in Bomberg's teachings by celebrating the artist's constructive legacy in the form of exhibitions and displays, which demonstrate his formal and philosophical influence on those he taught, emphasising the radical, revolutionary and subversive nature of his approach, as well as on contemporary practitioners who have found inspiration in his work, using the collection not only to inform audiences about Bomberg's classes at the Borough Polytechnic and the formation of the Borough Group, but also as a vibrant starting point for a range of new work, responses and research. An exhibition at the Barrow Road Gallery in September 2013, curated by Rachel Fleming Malford, entitled David Bomberg, Objects of Collection, brought together work from the Sarah Rose and LSBU collections, spanning nearly the whole of Bomberg's career, on the basis of which he is regarded as one of the 20th century's most significant British artists and art teachers. Six short texts were commissioned in order to explore David Bomberg's life and art practice through a range of different perspectives, and in discussing a work from the, from the contributor's own viewpoint or specialism, to offer glimpses of the multifaceted ways that this celebrated artist can be understood and appreciated, thereby enriching visitors' understanding of both Bomberg and individual works. The inclusion of unorthodox voices, including those of LSBU staff members Lisa Pine, reader in history, Paula Reevey, professor of psychology, and Carleen van den Buchel, senior lecturer in creative writing, and multiple perspectives, reveal the attempt to court hybridity, something which was perhaps more successfully engendered, however, by the gallery's events programme, which featured two writing workshops in which emerging writers were invited to create poems in response to the exhibition, and was followed by an evening of performances accompanied by Richard Price, Robert Bastias, and David Bomberg's niece, Cecily Bomberg, as well as subsequent commissions and an artist residency. Two subsequent exhibitions titled Three Floors Down in the Studio and Hands Rhythm, Susan Sluglet, A Conversation, presented a selection of work from the collection by Bomberg and members of the Borough Group, alongside new work by the gallery's first artist in residence, Susan Sluglet. Displaying Sluglet's practice-based response to the collection, 
the transformation of one part of the gallery into a studio space for the live creation of new work and the incorporation of visitors thoughts reactions anecdotes lent the ex exhibition an experiential quality it evidenced too the possibility of alternative approaches to the material beholden neither to the objects in the collection nor existing narratives Sluglet's residency subsequently spawned further lines of flight in the form of an art writing commission and a dance performance coincident with and in response to the elemental force of charcoal, which opened at the Borough Road Gallery in October 2015. As a result, artist and Camberwell BA drawing course leader Kelly Chorpening presented a paper relating Bomberg's charcoal drawings to those of contemporary practitioners, William Kentridge, Cara Walker and Robert Longo while dance performances by Siobhan Davies Dance, Trinity Laban and the independent dance creative practice MA students Benjamin Skinner and Marie Anderson explored what is referred to as a natural affinity between drawing and dance by way of personal research interests in improvisation and the potentialities found in physical interaction and investigations into the boundary between performance and art, art and artists. Keep the Paint Moving, David Bomberg and the Art of Radical Teaching curated by Sophie Person, included works by Bomberg and five of his pupils, Dennis Crefield, Cliff Holden, Edna Mann, Dorothy Mead and Mild Richmond. While the exhibition itself simply reproduced extant and oft-repeated narratives, hybridity was introduced, as with objects of collection, by an associated and alternative participatory commission. In comparing Bomberg's teaching methods with the ways in which students and staff at LSBU, as well as gallery visitors, felt about their own education and education in general, the commissioning of contemporary artist Lucy Harrison culminated in the publication of Art Cannot Be Taught, a crowdsourced manifesto for education. Associated with projects engaging with places, their histories and communities, Harrison made use of quotations by Bomberg and his pupils in order to pose questions to LSBU students and staff including is success limited to those who choose to be part of a group is self-expression encouraged the resulting manifesto another example of the possibility of connecting bomberg with a more diverse and democratized set of outcomes the effective closure of the borough road gallery following keep the paint moving and the coincident conclusion of maternity cover curator person's contract resulted in the decision by pat bailey in contrast in con consultation with Judney to hire a part-time digital curator in order to continue to, to part fulfill the conditions of the deed while minimizing expenditure on the production of physical exhibitions demonstrating not only the university's decrease in investment in the collection its failed assimilation and deterritorialization but also the assemblage at the macro and micro level how funding and its close association with value and meaning making happen institutionally aided and abetted by the agency of individuals. It was anticipated that the digital curator would be responsible for the development of online curatorial projects and the coordination of public events designed to explore a David von Berg legacy, the Sarah Rose Collection, in alternative ways. As a result, in May 2017, Teresa Nepper's tenure as digital curator began, during which time she has commissioned short stay exhibitions and performances and organized talks workshops and screenings the details of which are stored on a new and purpose-built website www.borrowcollectionarchive.com described as a platform for research and an exploration of the sarah rose collection through new writing recordings performances archival material and digital artworks as the domain name implies nepas has reconceptualized and relabeled the collection and archive in embracing the invisibility of the collection, opportunities have been created for contemporary artists to respond to its hibernation. Unconventional and multidisciplinary, such events, also seen as hybrid projects, are often conceived in collaboration with external partners or organisations. Designed to live both an off online, offline life that is accessible to LSBU students as well as a broader audience, they connect Bomberg with a range of alternative and unconventional outcomes proof not only of the possibility of breaking away from established and repeated narratives, but also of the enactment of a new and novel approach which does not seek to reproduce Rose's confused and amateur brand of art history. Events featuring Bomberg have included Bomberg, 
motion and music, an immersive performance combining animated imagery by contemporary artist Oscar Lewis, relating to the distinct phases in Bombay's career, set to a score by chamber musicians, Three Parts Vied. Taking place at the Borough Road Gallery on 30th of November 2017, for one night only, Bomberg Motion and Music was advertised as highlighting the artist's creativity and influence on future generations of artists. Succeeding, though not perhaps seamlessly, in linking Bomberg to both alternative media, animation and music, and original content. Two further commissioned projects have included Archive, Reimagining the Borough Road Collection, and Breathing in the Borough Road Archive. Held between 31st of October and 3rd of November 2018, Archive Reimagining the Borough Road Collection was a movement-based performance and exhibition, the culmination of Joanna Bolton's research-based residency in the collection store. Bolton, a sculptor with an interest in archives, labels, series and categorization, presented an archive of the directional marks in the Borough Road Collection. In cutting out, assembling and arranging, she stated that she felt the process of categorising and re-archiving the lines gives new room for these painterly moments to exist. Selected marks are not assigned a painter or painting, resulting in a novel and wholly democratic approach to the collection which does not seek to reproduce Sarah Rose's School of Bomberg narrative. Breathing in the Borough Road Archive, curated by Braden and Angela of the Accounts and Records Collective, took place between the 11th and 13th of April 2019. Consisting of an audio meditation accompanying installation informed by insufflation appreciation, Walter Benjamin's theory that, with the right guidance, the aura of a painting might be physically inhaled, resulting in the triggering of acute and profound synaptic responses, breathing was designed as a way in which to analyse and consume the collection, while sim simultaneously acknowledging its impossibility. Blue and white water-painted sheets of paper cover the pockmarked gallery walls, with intermittent gaps serving to highlight the absence of exhibited artworks, a number of which are swaddled in bubble wrap, stacked and bound together with taped marked fragile. Having been branded an archive and consigned to a st stored existence, such a presentation cleverly repackages the collection as a spatially conceived installation aimed at attracting a contemporary art viewing public. Braden and Angela's natural audience, but one perhaps unfamiliar with Bomberg and the Borough Group, whilst also drawing attention to its invisibility and implied institutional neglect. In so doing, the exhibition sets the potential for empathising with a work of art on a metabolic rather than a purely visual level. The ability to inhale its innate essence in the form of microscopic residue against the physical inaccessibility of the works, insufflation versus suffocation, reflecting what is arguably the burdensome nature of the collection for the university, as well as the decrease in its physical and emotional investment. It is noteworthy too that Braden and Angela's interpretation of Benjamin's theory corresponds closely with Rose's feeling that the act of viewing the works in the collection affects not only one's nervous system but also breath rate. Assemblage thinking informed research into the recreation of the heritage associated with the Sarah Rose collection at LSBU results then in the revelation of multiplicity, processuality, labour and uncertainty. Firstly, despite Rose's practice of persistent purification and resistance to hybridity, the interpretive work initiated by former curator Fleming Malford in arranging the gallery's first contemporary art artist residency, and subsequently carried forward by Person and Neppers in commissioning further alternative responses to the collection, has however succeeded in diversifying approaches to Bomberg and to the collection. Collect the collection then means different things to different people each of whom can be seen to contribute to the remaking of Bomberg, or rather the recreation of heritage through their own lives. Secondly, the collection was acquired and built in conjunction with and occasioned the making of Rose's idiosyncratic, in part spiritual and physically effective, and in part confused and amateur art historical knowledge. Labour on the part of curators includes not only the reinterpretation and recreation of heritage, but also attempts at assimilation of the collection in practical and passional terms within university systems and culture. Finally, as a result of university budget cuts, the failure to renegotiate the original deed of trust, the reduction in permanent full-time curatorial staff and subsequent effective closure of the Barrio Gallery, the collection now faces an uncertain future. 
evidence in turn of the Sir Rose Collection LSBU assemblage's status as forever in flux. Its stability seemed to be always and already provisional. And yet the materiality and longevity of the collection, however uncertain, means that it both creates and consists of relations that are not just a phenomenon of the past, but continue to be renegotiated in the unfolding present. Tracing networks of interaction allow both the implications and the material traces of short-term shifts and long-term patterns to be explored.